Hey, welcome back to the show. Now, the governing National Democratic Congress has begun investigations into why it lost the elections this year. A greater Accra uh, chairman, Adekoka, has been blaming what he calls well, the gullibility of the Ghanaian voter for their defeat. Now, following uh, that particular this election, there have also been several reasons adduced to uh, the loss but the national and regional leadership of the party, we know, have set up a committee to investigate the reasons, of course, to get scientific uh, reasons for which they lost. But even before the committee completes its work, its Greater Accra Region, uh, Regional Chair, Adekoka, has been speaking to Raymond Aqua about what they, what reasons he, uh, for what reasons they, he believed that they lost the election. He said, among other factors, that gullible voters who bought into the propaganda against the NDC caused their fall. The various regions, even the swing regions, one of which you had, Adekoka is actually the regional chairman of the NDC in the Greater Accra region. Welcome, sir. Thank you. First and foremost, the rationale is that you don't know the reasons why you lost. No, no, we know the reason why we lost and, and you've not put out these reasons yet no th that's not how to go about things after after a battle you just don't come out and say this is this is this is and that is why we lost you have to talk, take an introspection and look at what went wrong that you, you lost though even though you have answers you, you, you as, uh, even though you have uh, the, 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 the the you know the problems you need others to come on board to at least give a clear, a precise indication as to why you lost. You might have a very a view that might be different from what they have. So it is very important that this book go around and speak even to the ordinary person. As a region, we have a fair idea of what went wrong. And some of them, we, we saw them coming. So what are these issues specifically? Well, one had a voter apathy, of course. Uh, after eight years in governance, people felt that they need the things that they wanted they haven't gone from the party you see we have a situation in the in this country that people expect the party to directly put money in their pockets or directly produce some leisure somewhere that they must benefit from but is it not because they see the leadership of the party they see the ground and the big cars that they drive they see the that they make it's not as if they are expecting beyond what you've been doing anyway well, nobody drives big cars nobody i mean when you are when you're a minister you are giving certain perks naturally you are giving certain perks we don't want a situation where we say that when you're a minister you should go and use a, a Volkswagen car we, we tried that in previous years in the revolutionary times it didn't work at the end of the those who started the revolution themselves have to ensure uh, make sure that the the what they were using was something that who, who made their, their lives comfortable. Mm. Right. Even the president promised to put money in the packets to people. So it's not outrageous for people to demand that they see money in their packets before they vote. When, when they say, I'll put money in your pockets, that doesn't mean it's physically going to stand a circle every morning and call everybody, come and collect. Do you think money. that's the understanding that people got? No, 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 no. They understand that I'm creating an env enabled environment for you to tap into it. And that's what all, every government does. So the NEC failed in creating this enabling environment? We did. Right, the infrastructure that we put, it, we, we put in place. What no, were they for? What were they for? You said you did, but the people on the grounds, you no, say, yeah. did not vote because of the apathy. They don't feel the money is in their pocket. Because everybody goes around to put into their minds, this person is chopping this way. This person is chopping this. This person is doing that. And you know the Ghanaian, the, most of us, we are very, we are, we are very sometimes, we, we don't look deep into the message. We just, we are going to we are what the people are saying. And that's an unfair description of the Ghanaian because they saw what happened with the 51 million um, Ghana city oh. given to Woyome. Oh, they yeah. saw what happened in the case of Waterville. They saw what happened in the case of CP oh. and other judgment debts oh. that went different ways. No. They also read the judgment debt report. No, it no, is unfair no. to say that they are gullible when they saw all of these things happen right under the this, this This judgment debts. I, 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 a situation that previous government created by abrogating contracts that they have gone into. And the people use their legal right to ensure that they are, they, they, whatever they've lost, they, they get it. You will say that it is wrong. No, but I did not say it is wrong. The Supreme Court of this Republic said we should retrieve monies, for well, example, well, well, from Waterville, yeah, yeah. monies from yeah. Wyoming. Yeah. So it's not as if it's a done deal. It's not a discussion no, no, any longer. The people who were affected claimed that they are right. So they kept using the law the loss of the land 
to ensure that they, they, they get what they, what, what they want. That's what they, you, you don't expect the government to go in. Previous government will, will have just used uh, what a brute force to, to retrieve whatever it is. We are talking about rule of law. Mm -hmm. So if the government says that, let us go through the process, that is the government had given money to people. My, 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 my point to you is that yeah. people felt and saw of this money. It's not as if they were because misled no, into believing that because, there was some rot in this government. No, no because these people, have, these people have gone to court. What have we? It was a court decision. Why you mean it was a court decision? And the Supreme Court clearly cleared all of these issues. Well, and that's the highest court of the land. And, and, so there's no dispute. And, 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 the, and, and when they say they should pay the money, yeah. a process has to go, be go has to, you have to go through a certain process. Mm -hmm. Now, once you are going through the process, that person is also using another process to ensure that he also gets his, his, way, his way out. Yeah. So it doesn't mean that the government was sitting aloof. The government was also doing what, is, what the law says it must do. So that's, that, 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 I don't know why we always want to argue about these things that because of the government is corrupt. No, that's not the issue. Give me a minister. But, but give, me a, extent, give me a minister. But to some extent. Okay. Give, me, give me a minister. You want a minister? Who, who was corrupt? Jifa Ativa resigned because of her involvement directly or indirectly in the 3.6 million bars branded scandal. And you know what happened? The government put up a, that put up a, 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 a committee to prove the matter. Mm -hmm. The findings by the committee was what the government used. Mm -hmm. the, the, the findings did not say that the government should take her to court. They should retrieve the money. And the money was retrieved. The findings also said that all of those who were involved in the approval of this particular contract should be dealt with. That's the chief of staff's report. Should be dealt in what, in what sense? I mean, well, prosecution I, 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 is I, I, virtually no, what we do no, in this country. No, no. For what I know is that the findings was that they should retrieve the money. That's what, that's what I know. That's and the only finding, there are about six of them. But, but that's the last page of this but, particular report. What I read yes. was that the money should be retrieved. And the money was retrieved. So you think that corruption under the John Drummond and Mahama administration was just a perception? Look, corruption has been with us. One president said that corruption has been with us since the days of Adam. And even in, in his government, he was not going to expose his ministers to, to, to scrutiny. He will form an accountability uh, 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 committee in his office to deal with it. Exactly. So in John Muhammad's government, right, those who were perceived to have done something on tour it, we'll take it to court. But is it surprisingly, surprisingly, yes. you're talking about Jeddah and you were going to mention Abu Gapele, for instance, no, they were, they were taking to court. and Awin Gobit also no, in this particular taking, case, to court. but they you forget to... that the Jeddah report also indicted then Minister Clement Kofi Umado, you've never taken him to court. He was the one who approved all of these, what they call it, contracts. How is it possible that we are still talking about this procedure without yes. only putting... These are people who were seen to have amassed some, some kind of money. Kofi Umado was not indicted for having stolen any money. Mm -hmm. it, maybe his judgment was wrong. His judgment was wrong, probably. That doesn't mean you should, because I should hold him to court. But, you understand? Yes. <laughs> yeah, so so yes. you hold people to court when there's ample evidence that they've dipped their hands into the coffers of state. Mm -hmm. They've dipped their hands, they've stolen money, and that, that one there, that you cannot compromise on that. But the person has been has, uh, that was why he was removed from his, his position because he did not the, the value judgment that he made was wrong and that 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 meant that he was not capable of being a minister so it was taken away i get the impression that the ndc doesn't think that it lost because it did something wrong nobody and ndc that's why we are going to maybe the, our governance you mentioned apathy you disregard yeah. corruption and these are very nobody, important nobody issues that nobody disregarded corruption really? i gave you an example the national service Secretariat. Mm. Is the president who initiated... But if you yeah. worked at it effectively, how come Ghanaians still voted against the NDC? See, there's a certain syndrome of eight years, the first instant. And it's all over the world. But your party positioned yourself in a way to say President Mahama is actually I'm going for his second I'm term. Coming I'm coming to that. I'm coming to... And our opponent tried very hard to say that the party has been power for eight years. Mm -hmm. the, and we said the president has been for four years and we need to continue. The group of Ghana did not buy into that. But what I'm trying to say is that we did the things that will position this country going forward. And everybody, is, everybody everywhere is scared that, look, the president did well. The president brought a huge infrastructure development to this country. At what cost? That's what the people are also asking well, anyway. The cost is that, you see, I keep going back to the days of Kwame Nkrumah. When Kwame Nkrumah was doing the Kusumbu Dam, when the Kwame Kwame was doing the Temahabo, when Kwame Kwame was doing the Motowi, we said it was expensive. Today, 
they as we sit here we rely on those things so at what at what stage will you say that something is the, the cost is high the cost is in the future because what you are doing now is to ensure that the future generation will come and have a situation where this country will not be crumbling okay i get your point so there's a committee that's going to investigate what you tell me you all already know how is that possible in my region at least I, like i said earlier on we have a fair idea the fair idea that has probably might be different from what eastern region has okay or northern region has mm -hmm. so it's very important that they go out when they come to us we will tell them our idea of what went wrong and they are going to collate other regions and then they, they bring this the the, the 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 totality of that will inf inform us what actually went wrong but maybe what happened in greater Accra did not happen in, in eastern regions some say this is just a small screen to mask the fact that you are being asked including even national executives to step aside for doing a very poor job no no this is a collective the person asking you to step down asking what did he do what was his contribution but was the person given the position to act no this is a collective if i give you a, if i give you a, a, a project to undertake mm -hmm. and then along the line you also fail so you're saying that the call is misplaced it's, it's totally misplaced How? It's not because it's a collective. Elsewhere, we saw Cameron and Co resign after no, losing no, elections. No, no. What's the difficulty with the Ghanaian politician when you are being called upon to step aside after showing a very poor performance? So it's not. It's not. It's not the poor. It was not the. Look at the figures. It was that our people did not come out to vote. It is not that there was poor performance, but our people did not come out to vote because of what I told you. Because I told you earlier on that there were certain grievances among our people. Like I said, uh, people will feel that, oh, I've been in the party for eight years. I've been in the party for 15 years. I've been in the party for 20 years. I haven't even gotten a pin. But we keep telling you that if you don't get a pin, maybe your grandchildren, the, the, the longer your party stays in power, the more advantage you get by getting what you think you haven't gotten. But if people are, are not prepared to wait. This point you've made before, but I am just wondering why you're still saying that just because probably you think that people who are calling on you to resign did not contribute properly, you did not, as leaders, cannot step aside because what's the difficulty in stepping why, aside? Why should we step aside? And I'm told it's a collective. So why, why should we step aside? We have a mandate to fulfill. Our mandate, when, it's, when, when the, 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 the end of the, the mandate comes, people have got every reason to vote whoever they want to vote into power to continue the uh, NDC agenda. Would it not be more proper if you stepped aside than an independent team set up an independent committee to look into the activities of the party in general? In this particular case, the guys who led the defeat are the ones who are setting up committees. How prudent is this decision? What is wrong about those who are they not independent? They're independent, Professor. Professor, I uh, agree uh, that people uh, may be independent, independent, but the symbolic perception of them being independent also comes from a very independent and new team that put them together. The, 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 we are members of the party, yes. right? And then which other independent team from the party will come and put them up? It's the same party structure that to put them up. We have the party, the East National Executive, and the Council of Elders have put up an independent team. To go because that is why but, but the argument is that you failed you as leadership at the highest level national regional you failed. we haven't failed this is a perception we haven't failed and now i'm telling the governance it's not perception outside of no, a party no, your own party members are the no, one accusing no, 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 you no nobody's accusing anybody i haven't said nobody accusing us that we have failed oh, Maybe. Okay, let me give an example there's a group for the an accountability group uh, okay. um led by Sam, Nick papo samuado and co and yes I don't want to address, address these groups. I can also tomorrow form a group and come and ask them to say something. They are not legitimating your eyes? We haven't seen them in the party. I don't know which role they play in the party. So if you say we are failed, what role did you play as, 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 as members of the party? As members of the party, during the, what, did you, what role did you play? What role did you tell me? Tell me that you played this role and you played that role and that is why you are saying this. You see, so let's put that aside. The party as a collective mm -hmm. went on a campaign. And as a collective, must find out why we were, we were very sure of winning. And it not the president himself was very sure of winning. And we are saying that there was the extenuating factors in the sense that most of our people, for instance, the voter region, mm -hmm. people did not turn out to vote in the voter, voter region. Because if they are saying that, let me tell you something. How, 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 do, you, how, do, you, how, how do you say, in my perception, I would say that, look, we brought you the university. We brought you the Eastern Corridor. We brought you 
the, the, the youth schools. We brought you this, but the people are saying now what? They wanted a market. So that's the difference. So, so if they were, if they in, the, in, the, in their eyes, you have built a commercy market, and then you have not, you have not been able to build a whole market for that, they are going to punish you for that. It's what the way they are thinking. So that's why we said that we are going to find out whether what we are doing for the people, our members, whether they were appreciative or not. So people have different uh, views of how they want to go and vote. Someone, I, I know a friend who, who is from the water region, he's got five votes. He refused to go and vote. And what he told me, I wouldn't want to say it on, on, on television. But the different idea that if you are looking after Ashanti region, who will not even vote for you, and you neglect voter region. But you know, when I tell you that, voter, certain developments have gone there. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's the way you... you so, so if this committee brings a report, then what happens? Well, we'll call the bridge when we get there. When they bring a report, we'll, we'll, we'll cross the bridge when we get there. Absolute. We have, you, 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 you can't run before you walk. So let them bring the report, and let's see what is inside. I, and I'm, I'm told that one of the latent, not manifest, functions of this particular committee is also to test the popularity of President John Drummond Mahama and his ability to contest in the year 2020. Yeah, Some yeah. of you are pushing this thing. That we haven't gotten there yet. But President, Mama, President Mahama is still a, is a, is a popular person. Among, in the, in the NDC. Well, I'm not here to say that. It's up to him to come and tell us. But when the, when, when the time... Wait behind when he contests? When the time comes, I will, I will, I will, I will decide what to do. It's too, it's, it's, very optimistic? I'm very optimistic about him. His sons are very, his, his sons are very good. It's, but I'm, re, I'm a regional chairman, and so I must be very careful with the, the choice of words so that I don't jump the gun. But personally, if you ask me, I have no problem with him coming back. Many thanks, you, Chairman. <laughs>that is a great Accra chairperson for the NDC, Adit Kuka there, speaking with Raymond Aqua. Now he's been talking about what worked for them, what perhaps didn't work for them was the focus of the discussion. I've got on the telephone lines with me now Dr. Evans Agri Dako, who is Senior Lecturer at the University of Ghana's uh, Department of Political Science. Thank you very much, sir, for your time. Yeah, thank you very much, Steve. I wish you... Uh, uh, is it gifty? Yeah, this is gifty. Yes, yes this is gifty. I, okay. wish you, I wish you a very good New Year in advance. Yeah, thank you very much and many happy returns. We okay. hope that uh, next year will be much more prosperous. It should uh, be. For all Hopefully of us. Yes. it will be. Now, let's talk about Adekuka. And, you know, you could call it uh, uh, some introspection uh, for, the, for, the, for the NDC, talking about looking at their own, the reasons why they lost. One of the things that he said is that people actually bought into the propaganda of the NPP against them as the NDC. What do you make of such an assessment uh, coming from him? Uh, Gifty, that is below the belt. Is it? Uh, it's below the belt. You see, if you want to do a serious introspection, you ought to be truthful. Mm. Why do you think that the NDC has put in place such a 13 member, high powered 13 member committee? Mm. Why do you think so? That if they can just, you know, sweep their defeat under the carpet. Under, under this, uh, what I call a frivolous, you know, explanation. Uh -huh. You see, you need to be serious. Introspections ought to be grounded in empirical studies. All right. You, and you need to be truthful to yourself. You see, we, we are actually going into a very dangerous concept. I mean, not a very serious concept. I mean, a contest. Very competitive. This year's election has been. Mm. Uh, you know the media was there. The polka parties seeking to actually control the levers of power in this country, levers of government in this country. Don't forget that issues of economy was very critical. Right. The people were very much interested in the jobs. They were very much interested in policy slippages. How do we sustain our, our democracy? And how do we promote good governance, among others? Um, are we going to look at leaders who exhibit you know, serious trappings of insolence and arrogance, mm. or we are interested in leaders who will come and serve. Are we interested in people who will pro promote the public good, or what we normally say, the general well, for instance? Mm. So it's not just about propaganda. Of course, you and I, I mean, give me, you and I are utility maximizers. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't want promises? Every human being worth his or her thought Mm -hmm. is interested in maximizing satisfaction and minimizing pain. When so it if is somebody just, even when it is just mere words? No, but words do matter. That is what Obama said in 2008. Mm. Words matter. 
I mean, I mean, I mean, why would the Bible say that out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh? <laughs> if words do not matter, words matter. So what you need to indicate your intentions. You realize that the NDC is a, was out there demonstrating that look, we have performed. This is our track record. Mm. We've delivered on a certain key indicators, right. infrastructure among the others. Others were also saying that look, yes. Every government has done infrastructure. Infrastructure is a fundamental premise that we all build up on. Mm. But let's look at other fundamentals. What is the dignity of the average Ghanaian? Right. What is your level of, you know, um, standard of living, for instance? What are the utilities that you have to pay, the bills among others? We want to give you hope. And don't forget that Martin Luther King Jr. once said that life is built on hope. Otherwise, you don't wake up at dawn and come and sit where you sit and be able to, mm. because at the end of the day, you hope that your life will be better. So you basically be you think that if he says that, then he's perhaps not being truthful to... At all. At all. And you see, when you want to do diagnosis, ask any serious medical doctor. <coughs> the diagnosis must be right for the prescriptions right. to be right. So if you engage in, engage in, you engage in uh, a prescription or diagnosis which are ill-informed, perhaps, and which are not really grounded on facts, Mm. The tendency is that your prescriptions will also be wrong. And that is why you do all kinds of try and error. So in serious countries, if you have observed that these days in any serious hospital, before they even give you paracetamol, they want to be sure what is wrong with you. Right. So that what they are saying is that the interventions ought to be right. And once the interventions are right, your, 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 the issues are actually resolved. And if you look at it, it defeats the whole purpose of the committee that has been put in place. You have a committee which is chaired by, you know, uh, somebody, a professor from uh, uh, the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy, a very, a very important institution mm -hmm. in the United States. You know, Professor Kwesi Boche. You have very, you know, serious academics. You have uh, 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 Wilama Haji, among others. You have seasoned politicians in there, yeah, you know, uh, uh, Hudu Yaya and others who have been in entrenches with this political party all these years. You have in the day. And all that you are suggesting to us that 5.7 million Ghanaians who voted were all not, you know, you can't credit them with some intelligence that well, they would do serious analysis well, of the problems. Well, 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 but Doc, we, we, I mean, we, in this country, I mean, there have been comments, comments have been passed to, to the effect that, well, all you have to do is, especially if you go to the rural areas, is to, you know, provide some, uh, Bags of rice and provide it used to be. Is it that we, I mean, the Ghanaian voter has become, and this has been something, uh, an issue uh, uh, that has come up for discussion? Is it, is it that is it, uh, they become more sophisticated? Uh, the Ghanaian voter has always been sophisticated, and that is what we need to put on record. Okay. You see, guilty, you see, people, when people are voting, okay, or when the voters, let me like him put voters in an analogous position as a sovereign consumer in the market, marketplace. Right. Let the people go to Makola. You see, the, the one who is in the queue to vote is like somebody who is in Makola to buy. He's, he's in the queue because he has options available to him. Right. And that is why democracy offers you know, opportunities. It's not as if all of us are going to buy you know, or are going to vote for mm. just one party. Mm. We have options. And those options will offer us policy prescriptions and policy options. Okay. Of course, there are identity politics. People vote for all sorts of reasons. Some will vote because of appearance. Trust me. Some will vote because the person comes from his region. Mm -hmm. Some will vote on religion or ethnicity. There are some people who are interested in just the tradition. But that is what they believe in. There are some people who are going to vote based on track record, among others. Gifty, you are not going to vote, no be wishy-washy and say that these people do not know why they are going to vote. Look, there are some villages when you go, they have written on some corvette, no electricity, no vote. <laughs> if such a person is in the queue to vote... But Doc, is that not, is that not a effect. development that's a bit... Um, that, that's a, is that not a, an interesting development? It didn't used to be like that, wouldn't you say? No, we, we know democracy is not an event, Gifty. It is not an event, it's a process. And as we build the systems, as we build the structures, as we improve governance, as we make governance more responsible and accountable, as we put pressure on our leaders to deliver. Because don't forget that this one thing that we need to know is that no group of people has the right to rule. 
Right. Civil rights theory was discussed and discarded in the 18th century. Mm -hmm. It's no longer washing. So no group of people, at any point in time, people are going to judge you by a number of things. They will use us, you know, all kinds of criteria to judge your performance. Mm. And if at any point in time they decide to vote you into the sunset, you need to be humble enough to admit that position and then do some serious introspection and then repackage your message and come back. Don't forget that the same people, you come back to the same people appealing to them for your votes. Right. So if you are not crediting them with intelligence now, are you going to tell me that in the next four years, the people now will be sensible enough to vote for party A or party B? Is that what we are suggesting? Well, he didn't say Don't... they're not. He didn't say they're not being sensible. What he's saying is that if you look at the trend, I mean, sometimes Ghanaians, uh, some Ghanaians tend to tend to buy into you know the propaganda. I mean, of course, uh, you, you what, know, what is propaganda? But, but, but you know you that know. Propaganda, propaganda works. You know, so you no, know, it does work. But propaganda is have truth, almost like lies. That is the political concept of propaganda. So it means. <laughs> 5.7 million Ghanaians mm. could not decipher academics, professionals, lawyers, doctors, and all of journalists, farmers. And all. When you go back to Agunan Yakrub and you want to talk to my mother, who has no formal education, mm. please don't go and think that she is totally ignorant of right. the development of this country. Right. Look, when we are writing our PADs and we are writing our thesis and we are doing our research, who do we talk to? In most cases, if you are going to do a mass of survey. Mm. It is a man survey. Talk to Kusiyanka and Ko. You go to Aguna Yakrub and talk to totally ignore, congenital ignoramus as far as maybe conceptual issues are concerned. But don't think that and the person gives you all kinds of information. information. You are able to com use that to craft your thesis and your PAD and you think that the person who gave you that original information for you to craft the thesis is, is illiterate. He's, he's, he's literate but in other sense. All right. And but so what we need to do as, as a people is that we need to be serious. Okay. Propaganda works. Why not? But it's not everybody who is going to be swayed. You By understand? the propaganda. Look, I, have, I have students who are 18 years and 19 years and already in level 300. You cannot say that such a person, 19 years, writing very critical, it's a very cogent analysis. The mm. person cannot read in between you know, lines. I tell my students that, look, those who produce the news, or those the newsmakers and those who report them mm. are not always objective. That's a fact of life. <laughs> but it takes a discerning mind to distill the truth from falsehood. And that is why I think that a good number of our people are seriously discerning. So credit them with some intelligence. Right. Do that introspection effectively. Be grounded, be you know, motivated by empirical research. And then when we have got the outcome, we use this research to inform future decisions. And right. perhaps that will change our action. And in but that trust case, me, mm. trust me, we are utility maximizers. And the people are rash they make rational choices when they vote. And in that case, you would say, from, I mean, from all that you've said, I, I, my conclusion from what you're saying is that the setup of the committee, the committee that the NDC has set up to investigate the reasons for their loss, is in the right direction. It's effectively, it's, I mean, precisely, right. it is in the right direction. So anybody who wants to undercut the work or undervalue the utility of race research by offering, you know, some of these analysis will be just universal explanations. Otherwise, then the, the committee could just sit under some mango trees. And, 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 you know, and do their report. Mm. But he, you want to be serious. He That's talks about that. He talks about the eight-year cycle as well. Isn't that anything to go by if we want to assess? Um, you see, sometimes, you see, one battle that NDC fought very hard was the fact that uh, there seemed to be a convention emerging, mm. eight-year cycle. Rollins enjoyed eight years. Yeah. Kufo enjoyed, enjoyed eight, eight years. years. Unfortunately, my namesake Evans Viviata Mills was his was truncated. Yeah. Uh, whether good or evil, mm. his was truncated in 2012, mm. and therefore, you know, that, you know, His Excellency had to step in his stead to actually complete his uh, on his spite term and eventually yeah. winning the presidency. So the difficulty the NDC had in this year's election was to convince Ghanaians that. Then, uh, uh, his Excellency will still have to run for another four years. Okay. But would the MPP argue that, look, if the MPP is saying, NDC is saying that all presidents have self 
no, eight years, and therefore give Mahama, you know, President Mahama another four years so they can complete eight years. President Mahama is under the umbrella. He is sponsored by the umbrella, yeah, and by see. the calculations that we have within the system, the umbrella has served for um, for eight years, and therefore that argument is not is not is not valid. Mm. That is these are so the, so the, the the MPP was able to counter that effectively, okay. and that's why it. But you see, you see, political in any serious democracy is motivated by either the desire to change or to preserve two things. Mm. So when you want to change. You want to change for the better. When you want to change your friends, I don't think that gives you. You want to change your friend and go for another useless guy. You want to make progress in life, <laughs> isn't it? So you, when you want to change, you want to change for the better. Right. But if you want to preserve, then you see some value in that person for which reason you want to preserve. Right. These are the two major motivations for any decision within the police castle. So these are the two, re the two reasons for, 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 for you. These are the basis upon which the, the people of Ghana voted. Yes, among others, yes. But okay. as I said, some were interested in preservation and others were interested in changing. Okay. And as I said, those who really wanted to change, they wanted to see that the change will bring something positive okay. to themselves. Okay. Yes. I say a very big thank you to you, sir. I yeah, uh, really you appreciate much. your yeah, time yeah, with us. Yeah. I hope to see you one of these days, by the way. Thank you very much. That is Dr. Evans Agri Dako, who is Senior Lecturer of the Political Science Department of the University of Ghana, helping us, you know, to uh, subject uh, Adekoka's